this <laughs> cute for a while. <laughs> and then he does his thing. <laughs> I need to get some dust, dude. There you go. For his female listeners. <laughs> Rock the two cows. You should do a, sh- a show a show topless, Fridge. I will. Well, you want to get there today? You want to get topless today? No, I don't. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That's Frazier. And this is Pablo. What's up? What up, Pablo? What's going on, man? Galt Town Boy also featured in the Galt Herald last week. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, a neighbor, your neighbor, you're just around the corner here. You're not one of them fucking West Side Sacramento people. Fucking libtards. Yeah, a lot of libs live over there, dude. A couple of fucking trumpeteers this week. Let's go ahead. Give your shout outs, Fraser. You're famous. What's up? <laughs> All right. What's up to the new subscribers? We're up to 240. Keep growing. Keep growing that shit. Uh, what's up to the Sparrow Block? What's up to Ducey Fridays? What's up to Renee, Andre, Carlo, and Aaron? Reina. Oh, Reina. Sorry. Oh, he gets, I, I he gets wrong. them wrong every time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Hispanic names. You know? <laughs> there you go. Uh, what's up to Rick Lee? What's up, Ricky? What's up to Floodlit One, Brandon X, and G Thing? We only had four commenters this week, so they got the shout outs. What's up to new subscribers? Alicia Manet, George Ogus, Elizabeth A, Alex Maldonado. Amy Turner. Oh shit, man. Go ahead and go ahead and do the Carlos Nino part. I gotta get that picture, dude. What? I gotta get a picture real quick. Oh man. Do the Carlos Nino part. <laughs> what the This is special, man. My new my, my new podcast. <coughs> special shout out to Carlos Nino. Uh who's a fired pilot, financial advisor, underwater metal, hydrogen, welder, <laughs> loves crafts, woodworking with torches. Um, number 20 at the Galt, in Galt High School basketball champion in 1998. What's up, Los? What up, Los? All right. All right, so uh, this arrived in the mail last week. It came addressed anonymous. It was from Texas, but uh, you guys all know my dog, Max. After 12 years, the guy gave up the ghost and died, but look at this. It's a fucking picture somebody sent me from Texas, one of our listeners. I want to say thanks. Uh, made me super happy. I almost cried when I saw it. Nice. Pretty, pretty badass for somebody to uh, put in the time and the effort and then to mail shit off to do that. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. All right. All On a right. solemn note. Let's Sorry. go. Let's go. Almost, cr- almost cried. <laughs> so what's up? Watch Pablo introduce himself. Yeah, tell us who you are, bro. Um, Pablo Saldivar. Um, Born and raised in Galt. G Town. Uh, grew up in the West Side. Still live on the West Side. Um, family man. Got a wife, Aaron Saldivar. My kids, Reina, Andre, and Carlo. Uh, pretty much, I'm here to talk about the trades. <laughs> I, I uh, was featured in the paper, I guess, uh, talking about construction and about how I uh, took the a different path to get where I'm at and actually you know doing very well financially and as well as uh, you know just, just living happy, my best life just happy all over all over, overall huh well, yeah you, you know one of the things that surprises me man is like uh, they make an issue of it if you don't go to college right yeah so now they have the trades versus college deal but yeah I would say when we were growing up it was like 80% of people didn't go to college man right yeah you know you either learn to trade from your fa- somebody in your family, like you worked at a winery or on a farm, or you went to work in construction with a friend, something like that, right? Yeah, so uh, I grew up in a family where there was no male role model in the household. So getting that opportunity to learn to trade from a father or something like that wasn't there. Um, I pretty much just went to school knowing that once I got out, I was going to have to get into the workforce there, we, we didn't have extra vehicles for me to, to go out of town. College to go, to wasn't college. really an option. It wasn't an option. Really? It wasn't an option? Because almost a, when you go to college, you have to have like a safety net almost. Like yeah. you got someone to support you or, or maybe get you a vehicle because you're not really working. Or, or you need gas money to get to whatever, school. Whatever it is, you got a place to go. When, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way as you, Pablo. When I was like fucking 17, 18, I was pretty much on my own and I started construction because I had to pay bills. I had to eat. I had to fucking yeah. you know, do what I had to do and either... 
I could be like everybody else and cry the blues and fucking just kind of hum along and do whatever or fucking just engulf myself in a trade that I fucking picked and say, you know what? I, I, I probably like you as I seen other people making decent money. I'm like, fuck, I could do what they do maybe a year or two from now. And when I started making, you know, $16 an hour, then it was $23 an hour. Then it was, you know, I was like, oh, fuck, I can make more just by, I don't know, working hard. I mean, well, it didn't start off like that. I mean, I started off at Round Table Pizza, um, just kind of working, actually became an became a manager and then worked my way through a couple other jobs before I landed in the construction industry because I was almost like that was frowned upon so I'm told, you know once you you start working construction you're you kind of just you're that guy now so blood in blood out yeah so <laughs> it wasn't until I was about I think 21 when I got into construction 22 and um, ever since I you know I got into it it, 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 it was all the things that I learned in high school from um, my drafting classes, art, computers, kind of all just kind of came together, math. Um, and I was able to use all those tools to actually, you know, build a career. And uh, it, the thing is, is that these kids don't understand that, that that's something that they should or they can focus on is, is preparing themselves to be inside a field where you can make good money well, they, and have no debt. They should consider it. It always should be a consideration yes. because, and this is what I say about my son, if I got where my son was ready to graduate and I'm like, he's not like good at school, I would I would convince him to do something, um, heating and air, fire sprinkler or something. I would be like, hey, maybe try this out. Maybe you might like it, but we know that you can fucking raise a family um, working for a living and, and there's pride in it I think I think people will try to take away there's like oh yeah like you said oh they're the, that people the construction people you know they're the labor force but there is pride in fucking working for your family and earning a living well another option that they have that I didn't read in the paper was also military military is available to most people right yes unless you got a medical malfunction or something that's wrong with you you can join the military and the military also provides housing food it, uh, college. I, I saw that uh, there's GI Bill now. You get forty grand towards college. That's that's pretty badass, dude. I, I I tell my kids all the time. You have three options out of high school. You either go to college, um, and I'll you could live with me. Yeah. Get a job. You know, start building your career and eventually move out, or you're going to the military because I'm not gonna have you sitting on my couch when you're 24 years old because you haven't figured your life out. Those are your options. And what's good about our kids is, like, our kids have a safety net. They can fucking, we can give them a better opportunity. Like, with my daughter, it's like, okay, you can go to college. You get a degree. She got a job. She's, like, bought a car. Now she's saving money for her own place. Like, we got, she's got a safety net where she can fucking do all that. But, like, I don't know. For me, I just never had that safety net, so I just went out to work. And I realized, like, fuck, I mean, there's a lot of people that make decent fucking money working in the trades that can, you can raise a family. And and I have no debt, no college debt, um, starting right out. I just started making a check. Um, yeah. So, and the, and the thing is, too, is, um, so I'm an instructor for the California American Fire Sprinkler Association, which is a program that's set up to, um, get apprentices into the trade and teach them the trade and eventually journeyman out and become a journeyman fitter. It's it's an education that has to be paid for and when you work for a good company, they put you inside that program and they're paying for it. You don't have to come out of pocket and all you're doing is opening books, learning your craft, and then you get to you you, you get that education that People that are going to college aren't getting for free. Um, do you see like any fucking when you're bringing the young kids up? Um, do you see any like hiccups with that? Like like they're not like I don't know what to say how, how to say it. They're it's, not hungry for. They're the not hungry for yeah. that. Um. Well, you're gonna get you're well. Here's the thing: the classes we teach um, they're in the afternoon from five to nine. So you know th those 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 I, I don't like to call them kids because they're they're in their twenties. You know they're 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 uh, they're tired from working all day, um, and sometimes you get those complaints. I'm hungry. You know I didn't get to eat. You know why do we got to do this? <laughs> but it, but at the same time, you know you take them in there and then you start teaching them stuff and then and then you're giving them that information and and if you're you're teaching right, they actually will sit there and actually listen. And then when you do the hands-on portion and they're learning something new, feels good to accomplish something. That's when they start enjoying it. So. And I, I've always been, 
I don't want to say a leader, but I've always held jobs where I was in charge. In charge, and um, coaching football, I've always liked to to give people the knowledge that I have because once I'm gone, that's all that's going to be left yep. is the people you've reached. Yeah, and that that's you know in the construction industry, if I could teach a guy how to install a system and he's he continues that and he teaches it to another guy, that means I did my job. That's what life's all about: affecting people. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I was just thinking about it. We all, right? None of us are college graduates. No. I have no. some college. Well, I think you have some college. Well, I didn't go to college, but the, the, the apprenticeship program we went through is it's a college credited course. So you could take those credits and apply them to a degree. Frazier was a liberal arts well, major. No, so what? <laughs> pretty close. But so what I see, though, at uh, where I work is pg e and there's a bunch of people that do have degrees. Like I was telling you, we have a, a chemical biologist that I work with. He has a degree in that, and he was had a grant, and he worked for 10 years on this grant. But then he realized he could make a lot more money working for PG&E. Yeah. So he's flipped the script. He's still got the college debt, and there's other guys that got, you know, they can go out and teach or do whatever it is they went to college for. Or or there's a different there's a different aspect to it, too. It's like some people aren't made to sit in an office all day. Like, I mean, we have, we work construction, but we have, like, a freedom out there. There's a freedom we can go out. We're out there. We're interacting with people, but it's... I don't know. I could never survive in a closed setting, in an office setting, 20, you know, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Like, I like going to one job, maybe three months later, going to another job. I like that freedom also. Not everybody's meant to be in this fucking confined space. Yeah, that's that's where I was. I worked in a warehouse, and uh, it didn't last long because I couldn't just sit inside that warehouse day in, day out. Just packages, packages, packages. It just, it wasn't for me. So Monotonous. Yeah, it's the same thing over and over again, and... And like I like we just said with the debt thing, I mean, it'd be nice to make a hundred thousand a year with no debt, right? And and you can do that. It's a little bit longer road because you have to put in your time, um, obviously prove yourself with your company. But then, but what? I think there's more opportunity to do that because we see it, and I see it. We work, me and Paula work together on a lot of jobs, and what I see is that. If you're like uh, uh, proactive, if you're like hungry, those people will rise to the top. Like you're like, okay, I'll take that guy and I'll go out of my way to try to get him a raise. I'll actually go out of my can, way to try you to can get help him. mold their careers, right? Because yeah. those people are hungry, and you could actually. There's a lot of people that work with us that aren't hungry. They're just going through the motions, just like every other fucking job. Yeah. But those the people that really are like eager to to move up. Are, are the ones who move up. That's It's pretty simple. Like, like when, when I started, when I was doing it, I was like, fuck, I want to make more money. It was the basic, it was the, the basic gist of it is I want to make more money. So I was like, I'll do that. They, they were like, Dave, do you, can you do this? And in my head, I didn't know how to do it. I was like, yeah, I know how to do it because I just wanted, there was, you know, in, in carpentry trade, you know, there's not a lot of people who do certain things. There's not a lot of people who cut stairs or whatever. So a, a guy I knew was was cutting stairs where, there's, where you can make really good money just doing stairs. So I was like, hey, I'll come on the weekends if you just teach me how to cut stairs. Like, you don't have to pay me nothing. I'll come in there, work for free, whatever you need me to do. I want to learn. So I was going on Saturdays just to learn that. And within the fucking six months, I could cut stairs and where I could just go on a weekend and make $1,000, whatever. Yeah, it's definitely, you've got to be a go-getter in life in general. You have to want to hustle. Um, just me personally, I, I tell people all the time, because they always ask, how'd you get where you're at? How'd you, how'd you get you know the respect you have at your company i put in the time when, right when people i did a job in palm springs um i remember going into that office and they were trying to figure out who's going to go to palm springs because everybody they asked said no i put my hand up i'm like i'll, I'll go. go yeah i'll go and and while i was down there our economy crashed mm -hmm. they laid off you know 40 guys and i kept my job because i went to a job that was you know out of the way but it was still you know moving along and it's just one of those things it's like take the opportunities don't don't say no because and i and i tell this to all the, the kids when you say no to somebody they might say okay and walk away but if they're your boss they remember that yeah you know, that in the I, back of their I head a, and, and, and they might say, use that against you i have a saying i remember an old boy told me this he says uh it's your turn to take a bite of the shit sandwich right now right yeah. Sometimes you got to take a bite of that shit sandwich and take one for the team. But there's going to be a day when you're the one making the shit sandwich. I agree right? on that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what you got to do. And these new kids that come out now, I see it in, in my job now. They come in, they want the newest truck, they want the best <laughs> route, they want the yeah. best hours. 
And they, they're expecting that. That's their expectation. Dude, I tell people all the time, get off your fucking phones. Get off your phones. Well, you're on your phone. I said, when you got 25 years in with this company, and you have went stayed out of town in a hotel for three years, and you've done everything I do, you could get on your phone. How about yeah. that? Fucking don't question what I do, because you can't do what I do. Yeah. That's, you got to earn it. That's the thing, too, is just like, you, you don't know what I'm doing on my phone, right? Right. I, I, I have emails to answer. I got been pro- programmed into my phones i have i have conversations with people with my instructor course that i have to you know co- call and have conversations but you with. know what you do you know how much that you do where those guys don't understand yeah. every interest intricacy of the things that you do every day because they go to a job and they work everything's there for them they yeah. just show up they work they think that's how it is they don't know that you're the one scheduling all the shit you're the one ordering all the shit you're the one setting all this up you're the one moving manpower around they don't understand all that they think it just happens because it happens you know why because you're doing a good job well you've been, you've been with me on a job yeah how am i on a job be honest pablo's probably one of the best i'm not telling you this probably the best foreman to work with with fire smugglers that i've worked with everything runs smooth it, it work, runs smooth, but th- that's not what I was getting at. Like, my attitude. You didn't say what he wanted your you attitude? to say, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> well, your attitude, yeah. Everybody doesn't. A lot of people, you are push people away. Okay. Well, it's not pushing people away. It's, you know, th- there's, there's a way business is ran. And if you want a job to go smooth, we have to coordinate things. And when we get to conversations that haven't been coordinated or they're against the coordination, it, it's a dead conversation to me. Let's not even have it. It's good the way Pablo does it because people are more hesitant to go to him to ask him for free shit. That's what it is because it is. my personality is too nice sometimes. I'm too nice sometimes and that's my problem. I wish sometimes I would have Pablo's attitude or Dennis's attitude where it's like, no, fuck you, we're not doing yeah. it. But I don't. That's just me. But it works. It works, but but the, the other thing I want to get out to is I've, I've built a, a reputation of you don't come to my job and worry about me mm-hmm. because that's not your job. Your job is to do what I ask you to do. Mm-hmm. So if I'm on my phone and I'm doing something, don't worry about me. I think we've, we've all found different way to manage, um, and there's different – and you have to – for me, it just works for my personality to get along with everybody. That's just me. Yeah. And I, I think for me, I think the jobs that I do run pretty smooth for the most part. They do. Um, but that's just my personality. And I, I just I just feel – I don't want to get too far off of just us personal, how, how great we are. No, it's but, a, you guys <laughs> had a good bromance going. Yeah. But, I'm waiting for a shirt to come But out. what we had was – opportunity that everybody else had yes that, that that we just didn't specifically have this just for us everybody everybody had this opportunity we just stepped up well yeah. go go at it about this way because here's another thing that um i have four kids that are raised they're gone they none of them went to college some of them did go to trade school right okay. mm-hmm. and that gives them the foot up for the jobs that they're in now but the debt ratio of what they paid like 10 grand to go to a trade school, right? Versus $100,000 to get a college degree, right? You're basically behind the eight ball. You're, you're more worried about paying your student debt than you are your, where you're going to live. That's why a lot of these kids live with their parents still, man. And, and you don't, and what I see is like there's so many trades out there that'll just take you in and show you if you're eager to learn. Or, you don't necessarily have to, to go to a trade school. They'll pay to train you. You go man. to electricians, the electricians out there will we'll fucking hire you. And if you're willing to work for a lower wage for a while, which most people aren't, you can learn quite a bit and you could step up and start making more money but the problem is nobody wants to start at the bottom everybody wants to make top wage and i know it's hard to live on but you got i mean i started at six dollars an hour and i was using my fucking bp credit card to fucking eat sometimes but you have to go through those struggles to fucking get to the point where you make pretty good fucking money yeah and then that, that that's the truth i mean i i started off at twelve dollars an hour and and i was already two two kids deep into uh raising a family and it wasn't easy you know we had our failures we we went through the whole um losing a home things like that but you know you got to keep pushing you got to keep pushing and and making yourself more and i tell my guys this all the time you got to make yourself an asset you got to make yourself a value you're either a detriment or you're an asset yeah here's something else i noticed too bro is like this is a california thing too because we live in the central valley right but all the money's out in the bay. If you want to make that money, you got to drive out to the bay. Or choose to live in the bay and pay fucking crazy prices to stay the night someplace, right? 
Um, mm-hmm. I don't see that right, happening. Right now, it's kind of more balanced. Like, you can make the same money in a lot of different places. Do, do you um, think in other states, so let's take Nevada or Oregon, you think those people have five-hour commutes to their job? I think a lot of those people are coming to California to make that money. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what's going on, man, because it's, it's yeah. a different well, situation here. We just took over... Um, uh, job. I wouldn't say a job. It was just kind of like a maintenance job because the company came, uh, came and did the job from Nevada and then they couldn't get here to do the service. And so what happened was that they, they finally said, hey, we need someone here local. And they took us in to, to do all the local work because they those people are coming from out of state to do those jobs yeah. for lower wages. Yeah. You know, we're in California, so we have to bid more. But then they're coming from out of state to to and undercut us because they could afford it yeah because their 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 cost of living there in nevada is way cheaper than it's here in california but there's there's nothing wrong with going to college if that's your thing i think there's not we're trying trying to make it like fuck college just go to fucking trade school no 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 My, my thing is we need doctors we need lawyers we need accountants we need all those good things but but where we're hurting right now in the industry is the construction industry. Right. Um, and, and all I'm trying to point out is you could have a career and you could make a good living and you could raise a family and live in California off the wage you make yes. you know, in construction. And, and right now in schools, they're not giving those kids those opportunities. Well, no, nobody's being honest with them. Like like I said, with, if my kid gets to the point where I'm like, he's not going to do good in college, I'm going to drive him to a certain, you know, push him towards a certain trade or something. I'm like, hey, maybe try this out. But I think we're not honest with the kids. We're like, in our minds, we're pre-programmed to say, no, you have to go to college. You're going to get a degree. And then what? Like, with my daughter, was like, it was it was so general. Like, she was like, I might do uh, HR or something. I'm like, no, get something specific that you can do. Specific job that you have you know in uh, that they will hire you for you could always do these other fucking jobs now she's doing accounting specifically accounting degree county now she can transfer into other departments but that that was her she was really good at school well you can do that in construction too man yes but you have to be honest with who you are you have to understand who you are you can't you know you can't waste 20 years especially if you have a family you can't fucking just fucking barely make ends meet for 20 years trying to figure out your fucking you want to be a singer and realize you know what i, I fucked up and i didn't take Karaoke care of my kids <laughs> that's people who do that <laughs> yeah but what's uh, up man you guys want to wrap up trades or you got something else on it um i just want just for those young i don't know if anybody young listens to this but there's opportunities um i'm, I'm working with the schools to try to, to to come and do presentations um to to help you know, get these kids understanding that there's there's other opportunities. I mean, a lot of low income families don't understand that you can find jobs where you can get a uh, you know a certification in the trade. You could you could do good things and you could raise a family. Um, I didn't have that that, and that's what took me so long to get to where I'm at. But um, besides that, it's just you know. Working with the schools, I actually got uh, someone reached out to me um, from the the Cal. I don't know if it's California Youth, um, but one of the, the 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 youth, you know, prison systems, um, and they want me to come speak. For, you know, with, CYA. With, yeah, they want me to come speak with their kid with the the kids there, and and you know, tell them my story and you know how you could actually take because there they're actually teaching them, you know, trades. Yeah. And they're trying to get them to, to use that when they get out to go get jobs. And, you know, we need that. We, we need we need people actually pushing construction out there because it, it we have a lot of work right now in the industry and there's not a lot of qualified, uh, qualified people to do the job. And especially with my trade, it, it's a new law. You have to be a cert, you have to be a certified fitter mm-hmm. in order to do the job. So you can't just hire no random dude off the street. He has to go through a program. And then once he goes through that program, he then he's certified with the well, state to do Well, you know, job. in college you have credits or you have uh, certain things, you academics, you points you have to meet to earn a degree. It's the same thing in the trades. Like you yeah. put in 10,000 hours on, as an electrician, you yes. get your journeyman car, or, you know, however it goes about. There, there's steps to making shit happen. But the first step is just making that decision, hey, I want to get money. Because yeah. if you want to get money, it's there. So we have it. Pablo's making Galt great again. <laughs> How about we go to emotional weakness? Emotional weakness. 
where we're at now in this country yes fucking everybody's emotional weak nobody can control their emotions anymore I think that has a lot to do with social media absolutely you, know, you 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 get an opportunity someone started voicing their opinion on that stuff and then now it's just constant now but you, you, you it, get to do it, it and you get to it share also it. is ra the raising in the home too we raise the kids to be weak or we could raise them to be fucking strong it's it's, no, it's, yeah. it's our fault we blame we always say the kids are all fucked up if the kids are fucked up that means the parents fucked up because that's how the fucking kid was raised we can't continually say well all these kids are all fucked up they're fucked up because the parents are fucked up. That's the problem. I, I, I don't know, man. I think you got to put personal responsibility on it. Because, like, myself, I grew up with several different families. You know what I mean? I didn't always have a father figure or a mother figure. I had several different families. And so the angst of who I was going to be was put on me. So if you decide you're going to get money or you're going to be uh, productive, you're going to raise a family, that kind of stuff, that, that's on you, man. But I think you also have to have, you know, people you in your just life. Blame. You have to have people in your life that are kind of helping you with that. Yes, and so, that's because you put yourself around friends that had the same yeah. fucking goals, dude. So, like, yeah. you, you say you didn't have the, the, the parents to, to get that. He, you did. But you, you had their parents or the people you were around. No, no, that exactly. Were able to teach like, you that. Uh, like I like tell Willard all the time, I t try to take the best things from all the people that I knew, and I think all the people that raised me, I, I really do. But I try to take the best of each one, and I also took what I didn't like about them, you know? Yeah. Like, you come home drunk, stinking like that, yelling, being an asshole. I didn't want to be that guy, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, no, I hear you. I hear you. Because, you know, my parents had their problems, and they were focused on their lives, and... and you know, you have brothers. You have brothers, Pablo, that went a different route than you did, and you had the same fucking parents. There is something to be said to be have some self responsibility to that, but yeah, take accountability. Also, yourself. we gotta we gotta be parents to these fucking kids too. Like we can't just fucking coddle these fucking kids on in every fucking turn. Like yeah. like last night, DJ had a friend over, and he, and I told him to do something. He was like, "It's all fine. It's fine." I'm like, "Hey, I don't care if you're fucking in front of your friend. I don't give a fuck if your friends here or not. You're gonna do what I fucking tell you." And then he does blood. So we can't let these kids off the hook. We no. can't. No. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is uh, that emotional weakness. I think that comes from just not having people in your life to yell at you. Um, one of the, one of the best things mm -hmm. that ever happened to me was playing football. You know, you grow up. You got. And, I mean, it's different nowadays. But back then, they would grab your face mask, yell at you, push you around. You know, you you built kind of a callus on what exactly you know callous. what hurts. And, and, you know, you have to give those kids those opportunities to see that. And I think right now what parents are doing is being helicopter parents. They're just like, don't, don't yell at my son like that. Well, what's going to happen when you're not there, when he gets into the real yeah. world and his boss is yelling at him because he's going too slow? You're going to start crying? He's going to start crying or he's going to shut down and he's going to tell you, I can't work there no more. That guy's mean. Have you ever had a guy you yelled at start crying? Yes. <laughs> I know you told me. Yeah. Yeah. He just straight started crying. Uh, I wasn't even yelling. I was just like, man, you're taking too long drilling these holes. And he just stopped what he was doing and just started like tearing up. And I was just like, <laughs> well, it, it, and it's happening more and more. Yeah. They're, they're being uh, built like that, man. You take it. They can't even take a loss. And so they don't even keep score when kids are starting baseball and shit now, yeah, right? I don't They let everybody that. bat. Fuck the rules. Fuck three outs and you're out, you know? Yeah. They, they, they've started fucking with little kids' minds. Probably about 10 or 15 years ago when they stopped keeping score, man. I was like, what the fuck are you playing the game for if you're not keeping score? Yeah. Um, because that translates into other shit, man. I don't know. I don't know about that so much as, I don't know. I think just parents need to fucking buckle down on some of these kids and just not give them just all this leeway to fucking, I don't know. Just, it just They're soft. It. Do you remember, I, I vaguely remember maybe once or twice when I was a kid, somebody at Kmart fucking losing his mind. Because Johnny didn't get a toy or something. Just fucking... Right? I seen it yesterday. Yeah, but I remember the lady fucking... She lit his ass up right there in Kmart, right? I seen it yesterday with the little girl crying because her brother had a cup of water. And we were doing our taxes and it's like... Fuck, I would never let my kid fucking act like that in public. Never. And they don't act like that when they go over your house. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah that, that's just parenting, you know? I, I remember... What is it? Discipline? Yeah, it's just you're not teaching your kids, hey, there's certain ways you act and there's certain ways you don't. I, I remember, I recall um, being out to dinner and my son, um, Andre, loved to death. He's a great kid now, but when, when he was younger, he, we, he had struggles with his outburst, you know, yelling and crying. And we were out to dinner and um, he started going through one. And I just 
took them. We went outside. We're sitting outside now. You're not going to be inside that restaurant. There was consequences. Ruining, ruining everybody's dinner. So we sat in the truck. My wife had dinner with the other two kids. They came out. Their bellies were full. We went home and he ate whatever we had at the house. Well, you have to get to a point where you don't have to hit your kid. No. When your kid knows you're serious. He knows to fucking act right. Yeah. Well, if you hit him good one time, that's all it takes, dude. <laughs> That's all it takes. No, that's what people are afraid to say, man. But I spanked all my kids, and they're all productive I, people in society. Man. I do. I don't think that you don't have to hit your kids all the time. That's not necessarily the discipline you have to give your kids. Because my kids, my my daughter's, I think, scared of me. But sh- sh- I've never hit her. You know, my son, I have spanked, but he's fucking. And, well, see, and I would also put him in the corner. I don't care if we're in Target. There's a corner <laughs> at Target, right? But there would be consequences. That's it's like public shaming or public humiliation, right? right? That they don't want to fucking face yeah. again. So one time they sit in the corner at Target, they're like, "Fucking, I ain't doing yeah. that shit again." So same kid, he had a corner in the house that he'd always have to go stand in whenever he got in trouble. <laughs> He had a little grease mark on the corner from his <laughs> forehead, and then it, it got to a point like. You know, months went by, and all of a sudden, he's got all these pictures hanging up in the corner. Like he, he this is mine. Like, <laughs> it was, it was kind of hilarious. He just started hanging pictures up. Like, if I'm gonna sit over here, I'm gonna yeah. be entertained. And you can't, you can't be where you control them, where they can't be who they are, because then you create weirdos. Like, yeah. you know, when you want them to express themselves in some way, but there is, there is a lack of decorum in the world. There is a lack of discipline. There is a lack of that, and, and a lack of respect for people. And and you're right. When we were talking earlier about the, the presidency of Donald Trump, you're right. There there should be some sort of respect for the presidency. You're right. We joke around, we talk, we bullshit, whatever. But there is a, a certain amount of respect we should hold. You know, just as citizens, we should hold. But we we not learning that. Like like even though we joke around, I talk. I still tell my kids, hey, that's still the president. Don't go online and say, hey, fuck him, fuck that. Don't don't say that. Like well, you can it. have an opinion about it, but well, let's have a certain amount of respect just for yourself. What about what yeah. about these kids? Like uh, seen it when we were on the with my daughter on the way to the bar, uh, Raider game on the bar, right? We mm-hmm. left from Sacramento, and there's a pregnant lady. She's standing up, right? And I gave her my seat. I get him give her my seat. But there's fucking four kids right there that are fucking way younger than me. Had every opportunity to give this lady her seat, but they don't have that in their their presence of mind to give something to somebody else, dude. I yeah. think I think we always have to take any time opportunity we have to, to teach them. There's always a learning lesson for everything. Just just you see it, take advantage of it. Yeah. Um. I ever since my kids were old enough, I when you get to the gas station, you're old enough to do it. Pump pump mom's gas. Yeah. You know. You, you need to be a man. You need to take care of your uh, of her. Um, if someone's older, someone older than you is walking into the building, open the door for him. Hold it open for him. Well, I think you, you did know? this before. I think maybe you told me or I seen it online or something. But you had uh, uh, your wife go to like a, like almost like a dinner date with your son. Yeah. Just so to show how you're supposed to respect women, how you're supposed to treat, open the door, just stuff like that. I think all those learning lessons is is yeah. lost in a lot of ways. Like we do it. But there's a lot of people who don't go through. Oh, how about a fucking you? You teach your kid how to shake a fucking man's hand. Myself. Just, just shit like that. All that little shit adds up to being a fucking like a contributing man in a fucking America. That's why I like coaching football because I, I would get those opportunities with those boys. Um, a lot of them don't have men figures in their house, and uh, when they come sign up for football, the first thing we would do, I would do, is shake their hand. And if it was soft, I was like, hey, "That's not how you shake a hand." Or men. You know, we're, we're about to play football. I'll let you shake my hand and put some uh, a, a firm grip on it. Like Frazier's a Cub Scout leader still to this day. He has a lot of kids over here that are like eight, nine years old, a lot of boys. <laughs> That's one of Weller's fantasies. <laughs> all they wear is the little scarf. Dude, if you, if you look at all the shit Weller's downloaded, it's fucking uh, topless Boy Scout boys. Dude. Topless. Yeah. You can't talk about that. Dude, I don't know where we're at. We need to fucking carry it. Hold on. I think that's another thing we didn't hit on right there, though, is I think school school has a big deal about uh, molding your kids, right, and their beliefs, and mm-hmm. that's changed, man. School has changed so much that that's what's helping put out these individuals that we're getting in the workforce now is the school process. Kind of. You know, my, my son will come back home, he'll tell me some stuff his teacher tells, whether it's political, or it's personal, whatever, and I don't care. I'm like, okay, just listen to whatever it's say because at home you're going to learn all this shit anyway, so you're going to know what's bullshit and what's not bullshit. And I'll tell you, go, ask me about anything, I don't give a fuck. So I'm not really too scared of them going to school and learning anything that... that I, I care. 
Yeah, but because here's the thing: it with politics, you, you could say you don't care, but what if they teach them something you don't that you do care? Yeah, you like they ter- teach them about the birds and the bees. That's your conversation. Why is your teacher teaching them about that? You know what I mean? It's like you you should care because. It, it's your child. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, most of the stuff I have... T- if there's something that's, like, n- not correct, like, for age appropriate, yeah, I understand, but, but whatever. Like, he's 13, so he's going to learn... About, and especially more now than we did. Like, he's going to learn about it early because you got internet access. You can't control fucking everything. Yeah, that's just an example. But I'm just saying, like, it might not mean much to you in that topic, in that regard, but there are things that they are teaching them that they shouldn't be... Yeah, like, they get a putting- CNN update every day at school, middle school. That, My daughter told me this. They get a C- CNN. Okay, update. I guess in in the broad spectrum, I guess that's probably not good. But because, but because for me personally, I take a very fucking serious interest in my kids so when they come home i'll say what'd you guys do today whatever and he'll if he tell me that and he has told me that his teacher said something negative about trump or whatever i said what did she say so we can have that conversation i don't care like okay this is the truth and i'll tell him the truth you're tackling it and we understand we're all good parents and we do that kind of shit but i know what you're saying you're tackling it from that point. not everybody has that time i'm trying to talk about the single mom or even the single dad i have a buddy at work he has five kids right he works overtime all the fucking time. He barely spends any time with his five kids, right? Yeah. So who's raising his kids, man? It's the school. Well, there's another thing, too. It's like, I, I, you know, I had the conversation with Sarah last night. It was like somebody, one of her friends had a kid, another kid, that she barely could take care of the two older kids, and then they had another kid. And I'm like, well, that's really not good planning. That's really, yeah. they got to take some sort of response. If you have five kids and you don't have enough time to spend with two kids, why are you having three more fucking kids? Well, and that's what I'm trying to establish here is I think the majority, though, is single parent kids, right? I don't think there's a lot of kids that have both parents. You're right. You're probably right. And especially, you know, we live in Galt. Galt's way different uh, medium uh, household than most places like a big city, Sacramento or San Francisco, right? Well, let's talk about that, how people don't put value into um, marriage anymore. It's true. Um, I mean, it takes two people to raise a kid, uh, a child. And, um, I mean, if it wasn't for my other half, my wife... My kids wouldn't be where they're at today. She she put everything down, her career, everything, to homeschool my kids when when one of the schools was failing my daughter, you know. Um, instead of trying to give her the extra help she needed, they wanted to put her on uh, medication because. Well, that's the answer. You know, it's that's the an answer appeal, for them. Yeah. It's you an appeal, know? man. And and what what we did was we we took, you know, raising our children to a different level. We're like, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna just give up on her. We're gonna go ahead and homeschool her and get her on the right path we did it with all three of our kids and she's a 4.0 student now you're 100 percent right 100 percent right like i always say if, if it was just me parenting my kids would be fucked up right because yeah. they would only have my perspective my wife's soft my wife's like hey your dad's just being you know what right now you know he's good he's all right he loves you whatever she'll explain that side of it you're right 100 percent. i agree we have no value in the fucking sanctity of a fucking marriage of a family we, we like i was telling phrase last week i was like we talk about kids don't have no interaction skills but this like we learn it at our dinner table like we have dinner every night together we communicate every night yeah. there's no value in none of that no more yeah and then and then when you get those opportunities to talk to your kid about um like for instance our, our the, the one thing that came up that i didn't agree with my teacher the teacher talking about was guns guns in general um trying to the teacher was trying to put their their opinion out that we don't need guns Mm -hmm. and makes everything unsafe and i'm just like that's not their job (laughs) that is not your job in school to talk about and and what what it is and i know we always fucking bullshit are you but i know i i actually agree with a lot of what you guys say anyways but it's just for me to fucking debate but um i saw i was telling my wife last night like when my when my kids want to learn about guns i have them talk to my brother my brother's fucking into guns like he reads the laws all that's all he uh, said this is what he can talk to you about talk to your uncle about guns he'll explain to you the gun safety all that shit there's specific people for specific reasons that you can talk to like i'm not going to talk to marriage from somebody who's when not fucking married like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take advice from my brother about marriage when i could talk to a friend of mine you or dennis and said said, okay give me advice about marriage I'm going to have them talk to somebody who knows what's talking. That teacher might not know what the fuck they're talking about. It's just opinion. They don't know about guns. Well, and that's the issue, man, is these kids don't have an uncle to go to to check out guns. These yeah. kids don't have. A lot of them are their mom moved to the Bay, right, because the money's good there. 
and she's working 10, 12 hour days. This kid's Who are you raised, talking about? These single. I'm talking about somebody specific. <laughs> no, these, sing, these single. That kids, fucking bitch. No, these single kids, man, that are being raised by society, not people like us. You know, no. they're being raised by the TV. They're being raised by World Star. They're being raised by YouTube. Right? Social network. Yeah. Yeah, they're, that's what they're. They have a social media upbringing. And those are the kids that aren't sitting di- or stand. Uh, Sitting down when there's an old lady who's standing up in the train. Exactly. exactly. And then that's the problem is that you have to che- teach those things to your kids, you know. Otherwise, it it's it's a, it's it gets lost. It's a well, lost you know, art. Yeah. No, you, you go to other states. You go up in Oregon. You go to Nevada. You guys have been out of state. You notice people are more polite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you get away from California, people right. are more polite. They're not all uptight. Like you're gonna fucking steal something from Smaller me. Smaller cities fucking hit have me, that. Or you're gonna get yeah. me, get over on me. You know. You know, and even even uh, me, I mean me in general, when I try to be nice to, to it's when fun, I try it's to funny. be nice. When I try to be nice to the old lady and say, hey, let me let me load your groceries in your car. She yeah. thinks I'm gonna rob her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She grabs her purse. I don't need your help. Like. But that can okay. de- that can detour Sorry. you from what you're trying to do. No, yeah. no, like it last, doesn't. I, we I to, still try. We went to dinner last night and opened the door for an old lady and the old man, and the lady just stopped. She's like, "Thank you very much. I hope you have a nice dinner," and just those little fucking small things. And it's like I teach my son um, when you when you <coughs> when you order, you let the women order first. You're the last one to order. Just little shit like that. Yeah. No, there's a. Um, <coughs> Here's what I've said it before, and it's what it goes down to is you are at in your life because of every decision you have made. Every choice you have made has put you where you're at in life. A lot of people like to put blame. Well, I didn't get this promotion, or I didn't get to buy this car, or that house fell through, or whatever. No, you're at where you're at in life. Don't don't blame other people. You had the ultimate choice to do this or that, and that's why you're at sitting where you're at in your life right now. Uh, I like the people that are at work that. I need more money. I need more money. Hey, you want to work this weekend? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, nah, man. They want the money before they do the work. Yeah. You have to earn that before you get money. This is what the people don't understand is everybody always asks for more money. It's like, no, you don't get more money and then try to earn it. You earn more money than get the money. You you yeah. earn yourself. You, you build up a value before you get that money. A lot of people don't recognize you could probably live a lot better on the money you're making if you just didn't spend as much. All right. You know, true. I mean, I got to a point like I told you when I went four months last year without a check, right? Four months, dude. Try doing that and keep your house. It's fucking harder than hell. Hell yeah. But I did it. You know what I mean? Without any help. You're dude, my hero. Sound like yeah. you look like you want to say something about that. <laughs> yeah, man. No. It's tough. Bottom line right there is I'm just saying save. Save a little bit of money. Even if it's yeah. 20 bucks a paycheck, put it away. What else do we got, man? I guess the economy, dude. What's up with the economy? Oh, Waller? no. Looking good. So we got two different views of State of the Union. Actually, Waller didn't even watch State of the Union, do you? Not I, really. You know, the one thing I did like about the State of the Union was he did say that they are trying to get uh, 15 million schools to... School of put, choice. Put vocational school uh, schooling back into the school system, mm-hmm. yeah. which is awesome. No, I mean, they, it's one we, of those when we came up, you had wood shop, you had metal, you had auto yeah. automotive. No, class. years ago they, I had a cost con- a lot of those. I had a contractor tell me that they they're, they're screwing up by not fucking you know investing in the trades and the schools and, and 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 I don't know if you believe in unions or not, but I mean unions were big at one point and they did. You, you could make a great living. Well, look at other countries, man. You have Japan, China, Sweden, uh, Germany, even Brazil. They have mm-hmm. trades trade schools for kids that are in. 13, 14 years old. Well, that's that's what they teach. And a lot of those schools, they don't teach history or, 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 or these uh, uh, liberal arts or whatever. They they figure out what you're good at, and they'll teach, teach you that trade. I, yeah. I, tell, I tell my kids all the time, um, I know you have to take history, but you're not going to use it. No. You're not going to use it when you get older. For the most part, it's just a good... Uh, conversation topic yeah. a lot of a lot of what school is though is just learning this uh these materials for this time period and seeing what you retain that's all it is we do have an antiquated Re- school system. yeah regardless of the class whether it's well math you need to carry the rest of your life yeah. mm-hmm. but like uh, english uh spelling um history all these classes like that you're just learning about the war of 1776 and then you're going to learn about 
World War One. Then you're gonna learn about World War Two. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You Some just, of this stuff, though, they is, just want you to learn it and does, see how much you can contain. But it does exercise your mind. We learn some of the stuff, so we figure our mind learns how to learn stuff, how to work, how to work through problems, how to come yeah. up with solutions, how to come with results. Like some of this stuff, I understand it doesn't really matter in your life, but it does teach your mind how to think. That's all it's doing is they're trying to prep you for when you get older, right? And I actually think they're prepping you for, for getting into other jobs because maybe you don't have a job that deals with history. But somebody else might, man. They might be into digging artifacts or fucking mm -hmm. doing shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, no, stuff, I don't know what you're saying. You, you don't because, <laughs> they, well, they had an automotive class, right? Remember auto? You learn how to change tire, yeah. change your brakes, change the oil, all no, that kind of shit. Nobody knows how to do that no more. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, now. Take it well, you can't do it anymore. Yeah, fucking. Fuck, look at the fucking vehicles they come dude, up with yeah. now. Yeah, no that, shit, that, man. too. Either one of those cars I got, I can't change the oil on them. Yeah. You need sp special tools to do it, dude. Yeah. I just, I was watching, uh, the I think it was Joe Rogan podcast, but he was talking about he got an update on his Tesla, and it was an $8,000 update. That's insane. Yeah. So he had to pay $8,000 to update his car. Oh, fuck. Yeah, on some software, and it's just like... How, how are you going to do that? I don't got $8,000. I'll tell you what, it was, it's cool as fuck, that fucking Escalade, man. Uh, once I've said it, it basically drives itself. And you're in traffic, it'll fucking come to a zero stop on the freeway. It'll just stop. And then when the cars move, it'll move. I fucking love that shit, wow. dude. I don't know. Dude, it's once you get their trust in it, yeah, well, you gotta get you're all in technology. It. I'm old school, dude. Dude, <laughs> he is old school. You know, a, a lot of the work. I, Weller. Yeah, all the work I do at work is computer based, everything. They just got him one, and he was, like, fighting it for the longest time, just like, I, I am, I'm, But I'm using it. I'm using the iPad now. I'm <laughs> fucking... I mean, you have to. You have to, like you said before, you have to adjust, and what, however I want to fight it, I got to adjust. You have to. Yeah. You have to adjust with technology. It's like my grandpa, who passed away last year, but he was like, fuck that. And I understand he's like, he's not going to deal with it. He's retired. He's done, but... Like, I was like, but Grandpa, I have to learn this. I have to figure it out. Like, they, they talk with the superintendents. I'm like, well, and we were talking about, like, another superintendent. I said, why don't you have him be a project manager? Well, because he's not computer efficient. efficient. Even though he knows really good about the jobs, yeah. he's not real good on computers. And that's the thing that we, we struggle with at work, too. There's a lot of older guys that they don't want to give them the new technology because it's like, they're going to be lost. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to be lost in it. Let's, let's keep on track here. So we're on the economy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Still We're on good. the economy and shit. And from my set of eyes and everything I see going on TV, whether it's CNN or Fox, I'm not taking the political lean on it. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the numbers, like the jobs numbers, way up. Unemployment, way down, right? And that crosses all <clears throat> barriers. Women, Asian, Hispanics, blacks. All of it are very low levels right now, right? Except for white people. White people are hurting right now. White people are <laughs> white people are screwed. Well, always. You know how you know how they never throw that number out there, dude. They never throw the white number out there, dude. You guys are always working. But from what I can see is that we are doing really good. But if you turn on the news, it's like America's bad. Oh my gosh, it's just like the coronavirus too, right? Mm -hmm. It's killed three hundred people so it's far. Up seven hundred. Seven hundred people. Who knows how many we killed in China? But the regular flu, they just said, is up to 15,000 now. Regular flus kill 15,000 people. And this is where I changed my opinion on it. Last week I was saying something about that. But we do have to be some proactive with that. Like in China, it's starting to become an outbreak. So we do have to be kind of proactive. Yeah, and but I that's, mean, what we, that's what they said about smallpox. That's what and, we and want, And it killed though. millions of people. So we do have to be proactive about some of that stuff. That's what we do want, though. We want a, a virus to wipe out people. Wipe out the weak? That's yeah. what they do in, animal, in the yeah. animal kingdom. Like, they yes. take the viruses that kill the weak. Yeah. See, that's where being in my cubicle is going to save me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> being a dispatcher? Uh, <laughs> economy's dude. doing good. I mean... I'm staying busy. But do, do you think it's getting to where you can't really afford t to live? No, I think... The it, way you want to? Um, I mean, right now, the housing is just out of control. Like, the house prices... Crazy, like, this right yeah. now could go for about four eighty, five hundred thousand. 500000 well, It think, shouldn't be that much. I think uh, you get stuck thinking you need to own a home. You get you get all these... Uh, oh, 100%. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. You know, you have to have that nice Escalade, the, the nice truck. <laughs> You're talking about Kevin... <laughs> <laughs> you know my truck don't do what his, what his is doing drive so. by itself but but hey i bought that for the show man you, you could it's a show yeah. vehicle you could you can, IRS, you can make a, you can make a nice living you know with what you know you're getting paid but 
it's all those little things we're buying. You know, we don't need a cell phone with, you know, unlimited da data. Right, right, right. You know, direct TV with all the, the bells and whistles I and think all that stuff. We're just starts, living outside our means. Yeah, it does get out of control. What, what people are doing, and this is where the fucking is they start taking money out on their house to get a jet ski or a boat or yeah. a trailer and they really can't afford it and that's when the housing prices start to fucking bloom and no, fucking they're, crash they're crazy they're crazy right now man like i said you take a guy a young man is 25 years old and he makes 30 bucks an hour right mm -hmm. he can't afford to go out and buy a brand new house because a new house now in galt is four hundred seventy-five thousand, dude but you, he you could have, save up and when the market goes down, he could buy. Yes. But so, yeah, but that's I mean, what I'm saying. If, if the And we all know it will bubble. Yeah, yeah. It's up and down. down. That's I, already see the, I already see the foreclosures yeah. happening again, dude. It's mm -hmm. just like I told my wife. Like, you know, there's a time and a place to buy something. And if, because we don't have the money now doesn't mean we're not going to have the money, yeah. you know, later. There's no so, patience. So we just got to have patience and sit on it. You know, continue to save money, and then when the time's right, we'll have more money to to invest in it, and then boom, you know it. It's it's just everybody wants everything now, now. and that's the that's just the world we live in because we got our phones. I mean, I remember my phone took forever to load up a page, and now it's like fast, and still I'm getting pissed when it's not fast enough. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's just that's the world we live in right now, and, and everybody wants the new best thing. They want the house. Yeah, but just you like you think. said, they want the, the the people in construction. They want the truck. They want the yeah, you know, all we, this stuff, and it's just we grew up when there was no microwaves, right? I, I had no, a microwave. I had a yeah. microwave. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking the microwave. <laughs> I'm not that old. I remember microwaves came in in like '84. He said there was no TVs. We were doing puppeteers. No. <laughs> <laughs> played played candlelight <laughs> fucking puppets. No. But for reals, man, uh, these kids that are born nowadays, they got 5G, right? Yeah. They're, they're starting out with 5G, right? So yeah. they're on a whole completely different okay. level of you, patience than we are. Yeah, they, they want everything now. Everything's now, and it's instant. Everything's instant gratification. I want to go now. I want to do this now. I want that now. But That's, yeah. an, that's a lost art, too, is patience, man. People don't have fucking patience anymore. No. And, and we, I do fall in the trap of sometimes I give my kids more than they probably should, just because of the shit I never had, and I feel a little like I'm I'm paying it forward or whatever, and I, I regret it sometimes. I'm like, fuck, that was just a waste of money. I should have never fucking did that, and I do that sometimes. I fall in that trap. I fall in the trap too, and and the the thing you have to try to do, which I don't always do, but make them turn it all off. Go outside, you know. I live in a neighborhood. There's tons of kids. You never see them. Mm -hmm. They're all inside, and and. We started to change it recently by, you know, we invested money in the front yard. You know, you kind of helped me out with that pergola and everything um, so that we could be outside. A reason outside. to go outside. Yeah, we have a reason to go outside. We hang out in the front yard. Um, the kids play basketball while we're just out there having drinks. Because we were talking about this uh, at home that day. Me and Frazier would be on our bikes uh, summertime, after school, all, till dark, every yeah. day. And nobody even checked on us. We didn't have no phones. Nobody could text us yeah. right now. And I fall in that where I'm like, every once in a while, my, my son now, we let him do kind of his own thing after school. I still check on him or whatever. I say, hey, you okay? But me and Frazier, we were on our bikes. We were on our bikes. We were playing no, baseball nonstop till dark every fucking day. I, I told this to my girls because my older set of kids did it. They played outside. They did shit. I'm going to the park, Dad. I'm going to go to Walgreens, whatever. They did that shit, right? But my younger set of kids don't do that. And I try to tell my younger set of kids, too, I'm like, if you don't walk home from school, how are you supposed to make out with a boy, right? You don't have <laughs> you, you don't have that opportunity though. It's true though. You're man. trying to get him to score. No, no. no or I tell him, hey, a point, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, are you, uh, how are you gonna smoke a cigarette if you don't ever walk home from school? You know, you guys are missing a part of life here. <laughs> Dude, because well, oh. okay. Well, I don't agree with Kevin. <laughs> no, no, no. Kevin, the, the, what I'm trying all the thoughts by I'm Kevin Frazier are represented by Kevin Frazier. And, and you know what? I'll take them, man, because these are life events that went down to help mold me into the person that I am, right? Yeah. By the same token, I see because I pick my kids up just like everybody else I can. There's 95 percent of kids are picked up from school now. I know, and that 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 that, that they don't that, that should change as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why kids are getting fatter because they're not walking home from school, man. My, my wife said the other day, she's like, "Hey, you getting off work early?" I'm like, "No." She's like, "I'm like, why?" She's like, "Well, someone's got to pick up Andre." I'm like, "Why?" He's yeah. in high school. Yeah, and he could figure it out. Mm -hmm. You could either go to a basketball game after school, go get something to eat with your friends, or walk home. I did it my whole high school career. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. That those are the things that you, you have to learn how to. And the thing is, is like, 
trying to find out how you're going to get somewhere that that that's something you need to learn in life yeah you know what i mean lesson, yeah. you can't just expect mom to pick you up every day you need to figure out okay i have to get myself home today what am i going to do how to operate on their own yes i'll like, tell you something else i see happening because you know tito tito's doing the uber and the lyft shit now <laughs> these kids 13 14 year old kids are getting rides now from galt to stockton that's how what? they fucking take a lift how are they gonna get late that's what the fuck they're doing, dude. <laughs> hey, smart. Yeah. Well, like, we did that now with my sons, like, right when he turned to, we're like, after school, he's allowed to go do whatever, pretty much hang out with his friends till, like, 5.30. Like, they go to Target. In that shopping center, they go to Starbucks. They go kind of hang out. Which so is they're like, smoking cigarettes, for sure. Yes, he's shooting up. He's fucking doing yeah. heroin. Like, <laughs> Black tar. But, but I mean, he, you got to let him go at some point and let him experience fucking life. You can't yeah, fucking yeah. monitor everything that they do. They're going to make mistakes. Yeah. And dude, then when I, they do, you got to correct them, but let them make mistakes. Dude, because I, I tell you, I've been living the office life now for like six months, right? And I've been outside my whole career. And I always say hi to people. Hey, what's up? How you doing? What's going on? That kind of shit. But you say something. You're in the halls and you say what's up to people. And these people are like, oh, my gosh. Fucking human just spoke to me. <laughs> I'm serious. Sincere, man. These are grown people. These are grown adults. And they don't know how to interact in the hallway, dude. Mm -hmm. They just keep to themselves like Mm. Those are the kids that are getting raised by staying in their house all the time. Mm. I don't know, well, Kevin, Calvin, Frazier. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're we're wrapping it up, man. So what do we got left here? What do you got? Money versus what? Well, no, we, I think we hit on that. I do got yeah. something, man, because it happened again last night. How about um, you know, whether it's UFC or boxing, what it, whatever the sporting event is like that, right? Mm-hmm. We have the technology and we have the ability now to, when a round is done, each judge should post their score. So, so you know who, how the judge saw the fight for that round, right? Why? Because what's happening is they put them all 12 rounds or all five rounds of a UFC fight at the end of the fight. And then you go, what the fuck? I thought my guy won. No, he didn't because the judges didn't see it that way. You see, there's a fix, man. Uh, I, Yeah. I mean, some things are just when it, come, when it comes to sports. Here's my thing: let's kind of keep it what it used to be, where you just were kind of on the outside looking in. Yeah. Even with like football, with with all these like player reviews and stuff. Hey, there's supposed to be some type of uh, you know bad calling that's supposed to happen. Yeah. I mean, human error. There's supposed to be human error in sports, mm -hmm. and if you get a bad round. You know, called from one one judge. That's what it should be. If 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 a ref, you know, throws a flag for something that wasn't, you know, a penalty, let it be. I mean, why do we got to review everything? I just I think if we're, we rely too much on technology and it just it's and it, it and kind of takes the fun out of it. We're too invested in this shit. Like people get so invested in their team or in their fucking sport. It's like, dude, this is your whole fucking chill out, dude. Like just because the yeah, 49ers lost doesn't mean your life is going to hit fucking rock bottom for the next 3 months. Like I, I think my my They don't is, give a fuck about you. I think my deal is accountability though. So like say we're all three judges and we're watching a fight, right? One guy gets knocked down in that round, right? But we're still going to have a different opinion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. This one guy gets knocked down. So in my, in my mind, the guy that knocked him down is winning that round because he knocked him down, right? That's but, a point system. Yeah, there's a point system to it. So at the end of that round, I think the judge should be held accountable for what he just saw. Instead of taking the whole the whole fight and judging it in one round. Yeah, but he's going to be there for the whole the whole the whole fight so i think what happens with and we don't know the insides of, of being a judge but i'm almost certain that they get graded at the end of the fights no i judge, know i know in the nfl there, they, that's no, there's no accountability i, for I boxing. know i know in the nfl there there is accountability yeah and if they have so many bad calls that they, they get a grade yeah and then if you're below a certain grade you don't get to do playoffs. You don't get to do Super Bowls, and you might not have a job next year. No, that's it, how they come up with those Brady refs because there's like five refs, right? They they've shown that he they have favoritism towards Brady when they do Brady games. Oh, this is Raider fans still talking about the tuck. <laughs> oh man, Dude. god damn! I'm not talking about it. Dude, he's talking about. I it. moved on. What? Hey. <laughs> Are you saying it was a it wasn't a fumble? <laughs> hey, it, it doesn't matter. Like that's what I'm saying. Like we we had bad calls. I mean. You could say that pass interference on Kittle was a bad call, you know. It wasn't. You could say it was. <laughs> I mean, you could well, you, we know. you could argue with Forty Nine er fans that say, "Hey, 
even with that push off, that guy was nowhere near to stopping him from getting to that ball. You could say so many things, but hey, it's a it's it's a call. Yeah. It happened. Move on. Monday just, morning, you got to go back to work. Yeah, and fucking that's it. I went back to work. People <laughs> talked a lot of crap to me. I don't care. You know. Hey, at least your team was in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Bro. Bang bang, Niner gang. De- Dennis kept saying that. <laughs> <laughs> kept saying bang bang, bitches. <laughs> and then he called me and said, "Hey, can you move something?" Like, nope. Hung up on him. <laughs> Clickety clack. Don't talk back. <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. what goes around comes around. Right. Man. All right. Thank you for coming in, Pablo. Pablo appreciate it, Sound man. Thank you. Thank you. Up, Woo! Woo! Galt Hero. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Let it go to the boom boom boom. Oh, we're going to let him show for a while just to see. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that smile. All right. <laughs>